What's it like playing Ronald Reagan, the great communicator? Actor Dennis Quaid stars in the new movie, Reagan. It's become my favorite movie now. Before this, it was The Right Stuff, which had a 40-year reign. So that's saying something when I've done 100 and all those something movies. But uh, it uh, was an honor to play him. He was my favorite president. And uh, I didn't accept the role at first. It was first offered back in 2018. And, you know, fear went up my spine because everybody knows what Reagan, he's like Muhammad Ali. Everybody knows what he looks like, sounds like, and all that. I didn't want to do an impersonation like Saturday Night Live, you know, and uh, wanted to try to get, find out, you know, the get get down to the human being. And uh, But I, so I didn't say yes, but I didn't say no. And I went out to the Reagan Ranch, which it's not a place open to the public. It was the Western White House, you know, and uh, it was bought by friends of Reagan uh, after uh, he passed and, they left he and Nancy's clothes in the closet. I mean, you think they're coming back any time. But I went up that five miles of the worst road in California to get up there and uh, the top and come out through the gate, and I, and I could just feel the man. He was a humble man, and, uh, you know, he really did do all the work there, dug those ponds and uh, f the fences and everything. The, the house was... He wasn't a rich man either. That's come to find out, you know, uh, the house was like 1,100 square feet. Uh, they had a king size bed, but it was two single beds that were zip tied together. That was the president, uh, you know, the leader of the free world. <laughs> In fact, he even had a little because he was tall for that bed. They even had a little footstool extended off of it, so they, you know, kind of sound a little bit like Lincoln, uh, and. Uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, quite, I could really feel his spirit there. And um, I was lucky enough, you know, to, I had a year to prepare for it. And uh, shooting it was, you know, and we had quite a journey with that. We shot during COVID and we all got COVID. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, uh, and, um, but, we shot at the ranch, and we shot we shot the rest in Oklahoma. Uh, kind of pretending it was it was uh, Dixon, Illinois, and a few other places. And the Berlin Wall was right there <laughs> in Oklahoma, in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Uh, but uh, great cast, Penelope Ann Miller. She's so wonderful in this, and uh, you know it was a uh, everybody there. You know the crew and cast. We're so dedicated. It's uh, rare that you get really that type of feeling on on a set, and I think that's reflected in the film. Deb Williams, Auto Week. Thank you for joining us here in Thank Daytona. You, Deb. And uh, July Fourth, nineteen eighty four, was a monumental day and historical day for NASCAR because of President Reagan becoming the first sitting president to attend the race, and. He gave the, the command from Air Force One, and then watching Air Force One land as the cars came off turn two was just beautiful. Have you studied that day? Will any of that be in the movie? Uh, no, that's not in the movie. That's one that didn't make the cut. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of stuff, I guess, that didn't make the cut to a lot of people, but there's so much in this. You get to be... There's all the things I remember. He was my favorite president, if I haven't said that before. There was all those things about his story that I always wanted to see or be a fly on the wall. You know, the, his days uh, as a boy in Dixon that, that shaped him. The, you know, his years in Hollywood. Uh, and, you know, that, that conversation with Gorbachev, you know, alone in the room. And, you know, everything in it, it's, it's not made up. The, everything, I think the only non-historical fact that was said and done was uh, my dog Peaches, who's a, you know, a miniature bulldog, they didn't have one. But that's about, the, <laughs> that's the, she plays the family dog, and that's the only thing that's not a, a fact. Thank you. Jerry? Over here, Jerry Jordan, kickingthetires.net, to your right. I know that Reagan really did a lot for NASCAR with that, though. It really started to take off after that. You started to get huge crowds. It you know, became patriotic. 
really out here. You know, it was a, it was ushered in a new era, and uh, it was you know he was he was like that. Yeah, he was the, you know, I knew him from a kid when, from as as a as a child. I remember he was the guy that sold Baraxo soap on uh, Death Valley days, and you know, in GE, and he, you know, he knew how to sell which is a great trade if you're a president, you know, because that's what you're doing. You're selling it to the American people and you're selling it to the world. And uh, uh, he did a lot of, he did a lot for NASCAR. I bet it was. Mr. Quentin, Jerry Jordan, KickingTheTires.net. So obviously you already had a vast knowledge of, of President Reagan and his history, but in preparing for a role, obviously you would study and talk to people. Who were some of the people instrumental in talking that you talked with to get the story, to get the character, and, and to kind of learn some of the things that you were just dovetailing into uh, in, in your previous answer? Well, uh, first and foremost, when I went out to the Reagan Ranch, uh, John Barletta, uh, Trevor is here, I think, or was he plays John Barletta, he, and uh, he was the Secret Service agent who was assigned to ride horses with the president because nobody in the Secret Service rode horses. Or they would actually, like, a couple of times, like, walk their horse, you know, while the president's riding. It's not exactly a kind of James Bondian Secret Service thing to do. But uh, uh, but John uh, did, and he was he was at the, the ranch there uh, both times I went before we started shooting. Just the greatest guy, you know, his relationship with Reagan was over 30 years. He was with him from that time all the way up to the time that he passed with, uh, with Alzheimer's. And uh, uh, just a great guy. We wanted to put him in the movie as something, but uh, he passed, unfortunately, like a couple of months before we started shooting. But people like him who were really close and knew him, uh, uh, Ed Meese, uh, there was, you know, everybody to a uh, person said that uh, this is what to me kind of like made beyond the impersonation of doing Reagan. They said that there was a part of him that was a, there was a wall there that, that would, he was kind of unknowable in that place. This is the great communicator, but there was this private, private place that he had that, you know, maybe Nancy, and his mother and God uh, uh, reached, but uh, he really kind of kept himself that that private place. Reed. Hey, uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire. As an actor, what's the mechanism that you use to get beyond the impression and actually become the character? Well, very good. It's, you know, Acting fascinates me because it's about what makes people tick. Uh, you know, uh, why do they walk the way they do? Why do they, you know, Reagan had a crooked smile. Why is that? Things, little things like that that add up over the years. And then, you know, given that, you know, you never get away from yourself as, as an actor because it's your interpretation of it. And, you know, like, you know, you know, Tom Cruise movie, no matter what, you know, you're you're watching Tom Cruise and you know you're watching Tom Cruise or, or Marlon Brando or Jack Nicholson or whatever. So the question is, what would I do if I were that person in this situation? And that's the mechanism for what it, it makes an interpretation. And, you know, and you try to, you do, you learn everything you can. Like a, a year I was on YouTube's great. Because you know, you got all the speeches and all the footage and news footage and what you know for all that outside stuff, the way he walked and stuff like that, and a lot of that outside stuff can lead you to how they feel on the inside. And when I play a real person, especially like Jimmy Morris and the Rookie, or even Doc Holliday, who wasn't around, but Jimmy Morris was on the set every day, and then there was Jerry Lee Lewis who was on the set every day, right over my shoulder, saying, "You get it wrong, son." But uh, uh, but or, or Reagan uh, is that I want to I feel a responsibility to tell the story from their point of view, without judgment, uh, either way, you know. And 
um, but I think doing it from their point of view, out of respect, because if somebody was doing me, I, I'd, I'd want them to do it from my, <laughs> to be my side of the things, you know. That, but I didn't want to do like a love letter as well either. You know, it, it's kind of a warts and all thing. We all have, you know, our, our triumphs and we all have our insecurities and we all have our great assets and, you know, some of them that might be so weak. And, uh, uh, but uh, he was a great man. That's no question about that. Go to Ben. Uh, Den Dennis uh, Ben White here back back to me just a second you know if you go on the internet you can see some really funny stuff from from President Reagan I mean just enjoyable stuff did you have a chance to do that I mean I know you, you yes. worked really hard on the yeah. role but just for fun kicks and giggles did you just watch that oh yeah for sure I mean the, you know the best one is the second uh, debate with Mondale where he, you know he said I will not for political purposes, take advantage of my opponent's youth and inexperience. And, you know, but then he, like, he picked up the glass and took a sip of water to let it roll out. And that's where he stole from Jack Benny. In fact, he was always hanging around Bob Hope and Jack Benny and uh, stealing jokes from him, basically. That's what he was doing. He always he always opened with a joke, and he had that from you know his earliest experiences of public speaking because it put people at ease, and you know when you get down to talking about serious stuff, it's you kind of get a leg up if you've uh, made people laugh first. Claire B. Lang. Hi, Claire. Hi. You're a pretty amazing storyteller, and uh, have just really good at talking through a lot of the things that you've done. What's your impression of NASCAR and what got you here today? And what do you think about the Cowboys that wrangle these cars? Man, that's something else. Cause I just love to drive. I did the experience today. In fact, it was just uh 155. If you want to know, sort of good. but uh, <laughs> I just love to drive. I always have, you know, and I grew up at a time where it was like AJ Foyt, it was you know, another Texan, too. And, uh, you know, Mario Andretti was, you know, back in those days. That, those guys, I, mean, I loved it when they used to get, you know, A.J. Foyt would get really pissed and just get out of the car on the track and throw his helmet at somebody going by. And, you know, the, those are uh, fantastic days. And it's gotten down to where, I don't know if, they get, if those guys can keep up with these guys or not, just muscle, but... Uh, you know, Richard Petty, too, who probably did more for for NASCAR than anybody, including, I guess, inventing it in a way. He was, uh, I was going to play Richard Petty, actually, at, uh, in 2003. Uh, Disney uh, offered me the chance to do that, and um, Richard Petty came down. We were, shooting a, we were shooting a movie out here in Florida, and Richard came down and met him and uh, so I got a bunch of time at the Homestead track, and that's what I love about what I do, man. You get to go through all these doors that say authorized personnel only, you know, and it's like a, like a, a dream bucket list. I don't need a bucket list. I already, I'm, I'm on my fourth bucket but right now. And, uh, but he, Richard is such a great guy and, uh, you know, genuine, authentic. And that's, you know, that's what he also brought to everything. He did was authenticity, and that transferred onto NASCAR as well, you know, and uh, it's, uh, we wound up not doing the movie because I think Disney realized that they were going to have to get some vintage cars and then wreck them, and it was going to be, uh, I think, it, you know, the budget probably doubled on it, on that, so it never got off the ground, damn it, really wanted uh, to do that. Any other questions? What? I'd like to play his dad. Actually, yeah, that's the interesting part because he was a hard nosed guy, you know. He was something else. I know I love those crotchety guys. <laughs> got one in the second row over there in the back. 
Dylan's, Dylan Spalding with Auto Racing Digest. Uh, Dennis, well, welcome to Daytona. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Um, wh- what has it been like working, uh, at least partnering with with Ty and with Joe Gibbs in this project? Obviously, seeing the car in in full display with with you on the on the hood. What, what has kind of been that? The, that first process? off, man, that that car looks so good. But the, the way they came up with that, I mean, it's 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 pretty incredible. Uh, we were in North Carolina a couple of weeks ago, spending time with them. They're, they're in the shop, which is like, man, that thing is clean. Nice. That is fine. And, oh, uh, I love now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, did a practice pit stop, which is, man, does, so you're coming in there, and I guess you're going, what? For me, it was like 40. I'm sure you're coming in, you know, 60 like, until, like, yeah, 60, 70 miles an hour. What's the speed limit in there? Was it 65? Here? 65, yeah. Yeah. Just come, those brakes work really good. They're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Even more expensive now that I was on them. But those guys running in front of you and you <laughs> like that, stop, like they trust you or whatever. It's really quite something. There's so much to racing as, as a team effort to begin with. That's, you know, it's like that's what it really makes it interesting. Do we have any other questions? Anybody else? Thank you, Dennis. Movie does come out August 30th nationwide. And, yeah. Uh, enjoy the race. Yeah. Love to get all you baby boomers out there to, you know, you led the charge going to the movies back in the 80s. Well, it's, t- you know, this is one that's made for you and take your kids because it's, uh, it's, it's a great experience. If you're born before 1985, it's a great chance to look back and remember how great this country was. 